Fly away. Big shout out time. Yeah, 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 yeah,
making you better, developing you. Yes, this year we got to get this thing together. Come on. We have to look at us. We have to take a look at us. Come on. We cannot miss the 2018 blessings, the 2019 blessings, and the 2020 blessings. And we haven't even talked about 2021 blessings. We cannot miss one blessing that God is going to release, come on, into the atmosphere that the holy angels are going to be responsible for escorting those blessings into our family's lives. We can't miss one of them, child of God, because you know what? It has your name on it. It belongs to you. Come on, it has your social security name on it, your, your social security numbers on it. It has everything about your fingerprints on it. It belongs to you. It's legally yours. We don't want to miss it because we just don't want I don't want to leave one thing back. You know, it's like if someone brings gifts to your house and they bring a lot of presents, and if it has your name on it, you know, like during Christmas time, you want that gift because you don't know what's, when you unwrap it, what's really behind it. Come on now. So we don't want to miss it. It could be the very thing you prayed for, the thing you've been standing for, the thing that you've been in intercession for. Come on. Could be a soul. Could be somebody getting saved. Could, could, could be a job. Could be a house. Could be material. Could be non-material. Could be, you know, answer prayers for, 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 for souls of men that you've been praying for, souls of your family members. Come on. Could be somebody being healed because you've been standing in the gap. Could be your own body being healed. Come on, the pain and the agony of those, uh, you know, of that, that, that uh, turmoil health-wise, you know, the devil challenging you health-wise could be a breakthrough for your own uh, health. Come on, crisis. Come on, that God will deliver you out of that, high, that health crisis and, and cause healing to come to your body. So we don't want to leave anything on the table, especially when it comes to has our name on it, praise God, because God wants to bless us. And so with that being said, child of God, you know, we have been on this teaching about 21 things you need to know concerning committed to to developing me. You know, I, I'm, I'm learning right now at age 52, I'm keeping my eyes off of people. People will fail you. People will disappoint you. People will, you know, you have to keep your eyes on the Lord. Praise God. We had a, a banner back here that talked about keeping our eyes fixed on the Lord. You have to keep your eyes on the Lord because if you put your eyes on people, people can let you down, disappoint you and all kind of stuff. But we are in this thing for the Lord to serve him and to serve his people. Praise God. And, you know, people people are just people. You know, people go through stuff. They walk through things. And, you know, we're just learning to keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So that's what that's what this thing about develop. I want to be a better me. I don't want to look at what other people are not doing right. I'm talking about what am I not doing right? What am I? What can I do to make me better, a better bishop, a better husband? Future, of course, I'm not married now. Uh, a better parent, you know. Still got three beautiful daughters I'm raising. Not raising them, don't they? They're, they're, they're young women. I'm not raising them, praise God. But they're, you know, they still depend on me for their advice and, and stuff like that, you know. And I, I, I want to be the best father that I can be to them. Be, I'm a grand, I'm a G daddy now. Some some of y'all call it granddaddy, but I'm a G daddy, a G dad or G daddy. All right, is what I am. So uh, you know, my grandbaby there. Is going to be dependent on me for some for some God wisdom. So I want to I want to be sharp in all areas. I want to be the best bishop to my congregation. I want to be a good spiritual father. Come on to my spiritual sons and daughters. Come on, y'all hit the share button, man. I'm talking about this. Is what we have to look at, and I want to always be before you in this teaching uh, more in, in specific. I want to challenge you to be a better person. Come on, you can do it. Amen. You can do it. You have the wherewithal. Some of you got weight goals, weight loss goals. I mean, I got, I'm on that same track trying to, you know, get myself together. I want to lose about 50 pounds or so. Hey, I'm not stopping. I give myself no excuses because excuses is for the uncommitted. And I'm not giving myself no excuse at all. So I'm, I'm looking at me square in the eyes. Praise God. Looking at myself square in that mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. You know, who's the fairest of them all? Man, you got to get yourself together, dude. Come on, you got to get yourself together, woman of God. Amen. Do that. You know what I mean? Make honest uh, choices with yourself when you're looking at because, you know, there's areas where you can improve. Don't be afraid to improve. Don't be afraid to look at areas where there's some weaknesses or some, you know, some negatives, if you will, pros and cons about your life. What do you like about your life? What do you don't like about your life? You know what I mean? And don't be afraid to improve in those areas where you need help. Come on, everybody. Amen. This is because, again... I believe that the Lord has blessings that's in store for you and I that he's about to bestow upon us. And I really believe that if we're immature and we're not developed enough spiritually to the capacity where we can handle it, he's not going to bestow it upon us. And I don't want to, again, miss anything that God has. And I definitely don't want to miss it because I'm un undeveloped or I'm immature. You know, it's like giving a two-year-old a car, praise God, or a five-year-old. And some can. Some five-year-olds on tractors. 
in the woods, in the fields, driving big, heavy, heavy-duty equipment, earth-shaking, earth-moving equipment. But, you know, on a normal, a normal two-year-old and a five-year-old cannot operate a vehicle. Praise God. That's irresponsible for a parent to give that kind of authority or that kind of, you know, responsibility to a child. And so God wants us to grow up, child of God. He wants us to grow into young men and women of God, if you will. We, you know, men and women of God in the gospel that's eating meat now, not just on the milk of the word, but eating meat. There's maturity. Come on, you're not moved by who offended you. You're not moved by what people are saying about you. You're not moved, come on, by what people think about you. Some of you need to get delivered about what people think about you. You know, some of you, some of you walk out the house, you don't call 50 people, and you're on Instagram, somebody, how do I look, child? How do I look? How do I look? You know, as 20 people, their opinion about how you look <laughs> before you walk out the house, and you know, and everybody got an opinion. Girl, I don't like the shoes. Girl, I don't like the dress. Ooh, it's too hot. It's too, it's too colorful. It's too this. You got to just make up your mind. Look, if I like it, if it looks cute on you, you going about your business. If they don't like it, then toodaloo. My dad would say toodaloo. You know what I mean? God bless them. I mean, you can't be living for, you can't be living for others like that. You can't, you got to set yourself free of the opinions of others. You know what I mean? And especially with some of the people that got opinion because they may not like you, they may be jealous of you. That's real talk. And I, you know, sometimes you always say, well, who's jealous of, people are really jealous of other people for all kinds of crazy reasons. People are trying to live their lives, and there's a group of people that really cannot stand the fact that other people may be doing better, or other people may be doing something a little bit more exceptional. Come on now. You know, they could be looking better, they could be smelling better, they might have a little bit more, they may have a better job. You know, people trip on all kinds of crazy stuff. But man, let me tell you something. Don't trip on people. You know, don't keep up, you know, so you heard the term, don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Man, look here. You don't know the Joneses going home crying every night, crying their eyeballs out because they can't pay for the bills, can't pay for the car, can't pay for the house, can't, ain't got no food in there to eat. You know what I mean? You don't know what the Joneses is going through. So let's not try to follow other people. Let's have, let's just be concerned about our own household. You know, let's be concerned about our own giftings and abilities. Not being selfish, but there's, I believe with this lesson, more specific with this lesson it's okay to make sure you're okay. If you're not okay, we're not okay. You know, if, you, if you're really not okay spiritually, physically, psychologically, come on, we, we know, you know, your inner heart, you know, if you're not okay, we're not okay. So these lessons, come on, have been designed to make sure that you're okay. Developing yourself so that you can give us the best you. Come on now. If we got a better me, if I'm giving you a better me, then there will be a better we. Yeah, we're going to be the better because, again, if I'm giving you my best me, we're going be, to be all right. Praise God. If you're working on yourself, I'm working on myself. And that's why I believe some marriages bum out. You know, some marriages don't succeed because everybody's trying to throw the blame on the other person instead of trying to work on the things that, that need to please the other person. You know, sometimes you, you got things in your life. And nobody want to feel like, a, you know, like somebody's telling you what to do. But, you know, you got to if, you, if you're married, you got to listen to one another. Praise God. You know what I mean? I always tell you that, you know, marriages for adults, children need not to apply. You know, if you're not going to sit there and listen to someone, if they got issues with you doing certain things, you know, little corpse and stuff we do, if your spouse don't like it, then you need to make adjustments or try to make adjustments and vice versa. But we don't like listening to each other. We don't like taking correction, you know, corrective criticism. And it's just crazy. But you know what? Some of you ain't ready. Some of you probably were not ready or mature enough to listen to your partner or him or her listen to each other, and the marriage didn't go well. But, I mean, it's nothing to blame you for, but I want you to know that even with your second go-round or third go-round, whatever kind of rounds you, you get ready to attempt to go next, you can be the best you so that you can have success. You don't want a trail of failures in your life. You want a, 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 a bunch of uh, failures or F by your name when it regard to you try to do something, schooling, marriage, stuff like that. You want to win in this life. You want some W's by your name. And the only way you'll get those W's by your name is, is, is getting yourself together. Praise God. Come on, everybody. Come on. You already know to hit the share button in the name of Jesus. We're about to blow some fuses. Yes, I know I'm on the set this morning. And, you know, I got my little stuff on, you know. I got my little cute on this morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm not dressed down. A little partially dressed down, partially dressed up a little bit. You know, got my yellow kickers on. Got my, you know, my polka dot socks on. You know, we feeling good this morning. Praise God, like a child of God should. Hey, look, but we get ready to go to some points. I'm getting ready to give you a couple of scripture references because I want you to see. I think we, uh, my spiritual daughter told me we left off on point number 15. So we will reiterate point 15. I have a scripture reference to give you, 
And I want you to follow me because I want you to see something in this reference. All right? So I want you, again, to understand developing you is an investment for your life. It is something that you need to do. Why? Because we want the best that God has for us. We want all of God's best to be poured upon us. We want God to trust us with heaven's best blessings for our lives. We don't want heaven saying, uh, no, he's not quite mature enough for this blessing right now. If, he, if I give him a car, he's not going to come to church. You know, no, 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 Lord, you can trust me with a car. I'm coming to church. You can trust me with more money. I'm going to still give my tithing offers. Lord, you can trust me with a nice dress. I'm not going to come in acting like I'm better than the next person. You can trust me with a suit. I'm not going to come in and not speak to my brothers and sisters or whatever the case may be. You know, sometimes I believe when you get blessed, you should get better. Not bitter, you should get better. Amen. When God is bestowing goodness on you, you should always get better and not bitter. Come on now. When God takes you up higher, when he starts doing more, exposing more blessings to your life, you should get better, B-E-T-T-E-R, not B-I-T-T-E-R. Amen? Don't get bitter, get better. Am I? And so that's, that's, the, that's the way of the believer. That's the, that's the pathway that the believer should take. Man, as God is blessing my family, I'm going to be more grateful, I'm going to be more thankful, and I'm going to get better. I'm going to serve him better. I'm going to even pray better. Come on, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a give more of myself to people. Come on, I'm going to better myself to make sure that I'm doing my part. Come on, to make sure people's lives are the better because of my life. Hit the share button, everybody. Let's look at the scripture real quick. Psalms chapter 1. Do I have my Bible over there, Minister Rucker? Psalms chapter 1, and uh, let's look at verse number 3. Let's, let's look at verse number three, <laughs> and so we appreciate that, amen. Psalms chapter one, and look at verse number three. It's a powerful scripture reference, so we want to give you that really, really quick, and um, so I have my digital Bible here, so I should have pulled it up here, but we, we're not going to play with that today, praise God. <laughs> we're going to just go straight off the word, praise God. All right, nothing wrong with digital stuff, man, but digital stuff can be tripping on you sometime, boy. Tell you what, <laughs> y'all better get a heart back. I, I, I've been telling y'all that for years, get a heart hard copy because uh, if the internet and stuff decide to give out, you know, yada, yada, you the pad aside, they don't want to work today, <laughs> you at least got a hard copy, praise God. A hard copy, nothing wrong with a hard copy, they ain't going to get tired, it ain't going to get weary, <laughs> it ain't going to run out of ju juice, <laughs> it ain't going to run out of nothing, it's going to be right there when you open it up. Psalms chapter 1, let's look at this powerful man, some of you uh, have read this, it's a very, one of, my, one, of my, one, of the fa one of my favorite scriptures actually, because it's a powerful verse. And uh, I've always admired this scripture here in the word of God. Amen. It says, verse 1, uh, Psalms chapter 1 and uh, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Oh, this is good. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Let, let, let me kind of, let, let, me, let me share this because point number 15 says, Development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. All right. Development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. So verse 1, Psalms 1 and 1 says this, Psalms 1, uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, he, and in this law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf. And, his, and, and would not wither, and uh, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is good. Now, now the first part I want you to hit real quick, child of God, is this. It talks about blessed people not walking with ungodly people. It doesn't mean that you don't love them, okay, because, again, I believe this. Your development will, will cause you to grow beyond where you are presently. I believe that you will grow based on the circle of people you hang around. Okay, let me share that again. You will grow based on the circle of people you're around. So again, uh, growth, you, you will grow, uh, according to what we, the point, development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. But if you're around, watch this now, the Bible says that, uh, that blessed the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So what basically what we're saying is, you don't need to be around a circle of fools. All right, I'm not calling your friends fools, but you don't need to be around unwise people or ungodly people. You will not grow and develop beyond that. You don't want to, you know, the Bible says that uh, 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 a companion of fools, basically, uh, the blind leads the blind. You, you've heard the term, the blind leads, it's like the blind leading the blind, or, or a blind man leading somebody that's into the ditch, they fall in it, all of them fall in it. 
you don't need to be around people that don't have uh, the God factor. What am I talking about? You don't need to be around people who you're trying to go in the path of God. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that you're better than these people. Just again, the Bible is clear that we shouldn't hang around folk that, okay, so, oh, we shouldn't even get a, even allow people that's ungodly to counsel us because they're going to give you humanism. They're going to give you the world's view. They're not going to give you God's view. They're going to tell you to be selfish. They're going to tell you to, to, to do you only. You understand? They're not going to tell you to, 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 to better yourself so that you can be a blessing to other people. They're not going to tell you that. Got it? So you want to make sure here, but the, the scripture is clear that the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, this is the person, verse 2 says, but his delight shall be in the law of the Lord. You know, those that want to do the right things, like, Lord, I'm looking at your word. I'm a better myself. I'm looking at changing me. There's areas where I need to improve. I'm okay with improvement. And then the scripture has nerves to say, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I mean, that, that's powerful because it's always saying that God is always going to be nourishing your life. Your life as a child of God, when you do God's business, when you follow God's instruction, you're always going to be nourished. You're always going to get the nutrients that you need, so to speak. You're always going to be surrounded with the jobs and the favor that you need so your life can be blessed. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. If it rain or don't rain, I'm still going to get nourished. Praise God. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm by the water source. Amen? That tree's going to always pull nutrients from water. You know, trees need water. Some trees suffer because they have no, no water that's going to hit the land. You know, it depends on how the weather, the weather goes. They have no way to, to draw water to them. But God said, we're going to be like trees planted by water. Praise God. Which means we'll never parch. Come on, we'll never be thirsty. We'll never go hungry. Come on. We're always going to have provision. Mm. Because we're following God's way. Yeah, we're going to have provision around us. Yeah, that's what it says there. Look, that's powerful, right? And he shall be a, like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh, and, 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 and bringing forth fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither. You got it? You, you, you take a tree that's not being nourished by water. Come on, you know what's going to happen. That thing starts withering up, what? Cracking, drying out, potentially could die. Amen? But the Bible says here, because you planted by the rivers of water, you're planted about around resources and favor. You ain't going to never wither. You ain't going to never run dry. You will always produce fruit. Praise God. Amen. And it says here that he, he and, 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 and this is what I like too, and whatsoever he do it, whatsoever he do it, shall prosper. Praise God. What, it, watch this, child of God. It is a, it said whatsoever he do it. That means whatsoever she do it or he do it, whatever's on, whatever you tripping on in your mind, whatever you rotating in your mind, come on, whatever you rotating your spirit about doing, you just step out and do it. You believe it's the will of God. He said, whatsoever he do it shall prosper. Because why? He, his counsel is coming from God. His delight is in the Lord and God ain't going to let him fail. God ain't going to let her fail. Come on now. God's going to always surround them with the resources, that water to make that thing grow, to make that thing glow and go. Come on now. And he's going to always surround you with stuff going to make it glow, grow, and go. You're going to always be on go mode and things going to happen for you, the believer. That's why point 15, development will cause me to grow beyond where I am presently. Come on now. It's going to cause my leaves to always be green. Come on. Always producing fruit. Always, amen, being a blessing to somebody around me in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Hit the share button. Let's go to point 16 because I got some still some fuses to blow here. Point 16 is powerful. It says this, development will push me to a more effective status. Development will push me to a more effective status. I don't know about you. I want to be an effective man of God. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, be in the business of, of uh, you know, of course, my business is souls. But God has called us to ministry to make sure that the vision, come on, of uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19 is carried out. You understand? To rest and also connected to that point uh, where we have, we have the vision goal and assignment. And it's all behind us. It's behind us. Was behind us. It's in the front of our lobby now. I was looking behind us. It's always been behind us. And and so that that goal is, is you know and, and you know the vision itself is connecting the heart of man to the heart of God. And then that goal is to restore, establish hopes, dreams, purpose, and relationships and people by demonstrating God's continual love, knowledge, wisdom, power, presence through the preaching and teaching of His Word. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's ingrained in me, man. And then St. Luke 4, 18 and 19, that's, that's cold-blooded assignment because that's the very reason that Jesus came. Come on now. That's the reason that Jesus came and walked there. We'll go over there. Let's just go over there for the sake of just going over there. Praise God. And uh, so we won't mess it up. St. Luke uh, 4, 18, this is why we're here. This is why God has assigned him church right here 
in the beautiful city, town of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Right there, 418, 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, restore covering to the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. And he closed the book. Praise God. That is our assignment. So I'm clear on this. And this is why I believe point 16, development will push me to a more effective status. And especially when I'm talking about my hymn church family, hymn church, we need to also be engulfed in that to understand that if we want effectiveness as a church, I believe the first three things we have to do is follow our goal assignment. Come on now. Our goal and our, our vision, our goal and our assignment. That's what we need to follow because God gave it to us. And so to be effective, watch this, we have to make sure that our inner selves are good. We have to make sure to our effectiveness uh, would, would make it like when somebody else come through those doors, I can't be tripping as a husband, you know, that when Pastor T was here, that she, that, that some man that may come through the door may look better than I am, that, that, that I'm a trip that she's going to look or the man may want to hug her and stuff like that. That's, un, that's a lot of immaturity and undevelopment. And some of you got husbands, you don't want people to hug on your husband and hug on your wives and all kind of foolish like that. We are, we are what we call a colony of church. You know what I mean? We hug on people right here. I mean, we hug husband, wives, children. Come on, because we love people. It's not the funny stuff. But again, you know, you have to make sure you develop, man. I mean, you know, some husbands looking at their wives when they go hug other men and all kind of foolish. This, this ain't that church, praise God. In those kind of areas, you need to be developed because some of you are jealous. Some of you are jealous of your husband, jealous of your wives, wives, jealous of husbands. Like, oh, man, that's just a bunch of buffoonery. It's a bunch of foolishness, and we need to grow beyond. We need to be effective, more effective than that. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I'm not jealous of him. I'm not going to be jealous of my husband. You know, we understand each other. He loves me. I love her. And he committed to me. I'm committed to him, whatever the case may be. Effectiveness. We need to understand that development, again, understanding uh, uh, the concepts of the word, understanding the scripture like we just read, understanding your vision, goal, assignment for your personal life will cause that effectiveness status to come on your life. I want to be effective. I don't know about you. I want to, you know, some of you work at jobs. You want to be effective on that job. You don't want to be going to the job just to, the Bible says the, the, uh, the, the fervent, effectual presence of the righteous avail of You want to learn how to what? Pray the word. Effective. I'm not just going to be mumbling everything like, Lord, uh, bless my family and no more. Bless my four no more. Oh, Lord, you run. No, we have a prayer, we call it prayer that avail much book. Amen. And uh, we, have a, we have that. And we pray out of those books. We pray the words in the front or the back somewhere. Uh, we pray that word, and uh, guess what? It's praying effective. It's giving you the scripture references. It's giving you the, the tone of that reference. It's in the front row, and, and, and so the back, the back of it, the back. It's giving you the, the scripture reference. It's giving you all the things you need so you can pray what? Effective prayers. Not hit and miss. This little book right here, we all want to, you know, I, I've done shared it before. Prayers that avail much, avail much. This red book by Jermaine Copeland, I don't know the lady, uh, shameless plug, I don't know her, but praise God, maybe one day get a chance to meet her, she's still living. But this book here, I'm telling you, you talking about praying effective prayers, we don't want to pray amiss. We want to pray effectively. Some of you don't have a prayer life. Some of you don't spend time in the Word. This stuff will help you to develop you. It really will. And you will be praying effective prayers. Praise God. Hitting the target where it needs to be hit, y'all. We don't have time. When you open your mouth to pray, we need to be moving devils and demons and scattering. Come on. I mean, we need to be impacting uh, 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 spheres. We need to be impacting regions. Come on. We need to be impacting the, uh, countries and states and towns. We need to be, come on, turning stuff upside down for the glory of God. That's what effective. So we don't need to be not being developed, especially so like prayer. But it ain't that deep because the prayer's already written out for you. That, it ain't that deep, praise God. All right, let's go to another point because I want to kind of camp out at this next point. Thank you, bro, my minister. And uh, I want to camp out right here because this is a, this is a biggie right here, uh, this next point I'm going to give you right here because this is something we need to uh, uh, let, not let the enemy punk us on, all right? Some of you, I'm going to give you the scripture you understand what, what I'm about to say here in a minute. Okay, so... Um, Let's look at this. So my next point is point number uh, 17, and we're almost done. Praise God. But we're not going to finish tonight, or <laughs> today, excuse me. So, so here's the point. Here's the point. point. This point is this, says this. Point 17 says, I can't be afraid of making me better. That's the simple point. I cannot 
or I can't be afraid of making me better. Okay, now let's hang out here for a minute. Okay, there is something called the spirit of fear that, that, that blocks people from accomplishing any great thing in this life. You will not do anything great in this life, child of God, being fearful. You will not, you will not accomplish great feats, not defeats, but you will not accomplish feats, praise God, if you are afraid. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes the opposite. Fear comes by hearing what the devil has to say and not hearing the word of God, all right? So faith and fear is the opposite, like, the, you know, an antonym, the opposite. So faith caused you to tap into the things of the kingdom. Fear caused the kingdom, of the, the, the things of the kingdom to move away from you. So you have to operate in faith or fear. Fear comes into your ear and your hearing. Faith also comes into your hearing as well. So, but here, here's the point. The scripture talks about uh, uh, not fearing. And so we have to understand the scripture has a lot to say about not fearing. Uh, and, and, you know, we get worked up about a lot of stuff. We, we allow our eyes to make decisions for us, child of God. Some of you look at stuff and you get fearful and panicky. You know what I mean? I know, man, we, 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 we get fearful about all kinds of stuff. Children driving, children not home at a certain time of night, you hear sirens. I mean, you, your mind can be all over the place like ant bed. You know what I mean? Like you stir ant bed up. Your mind is be all over the place. But let me, let me give you some scripture references so we can relax in our spirit because one of the things that Jesus left with us is peace. You know what I mean? We have to take peace in this life and not let fear rule us. See, we have to understand, I'm going to develop, amen, I'm not going to be afraid, I'm not going to be afraid, afraid, I'm not going to be fearful of making me better. I'm not going to let the devil say, well, you all right, you just, it, this is just the way you are, your family is like this. Your granddaddy is like this. Your grandmama's like this. They family was like this. This is just the way we are. The devil is a liar. If it's not lined up with that word, you can be changed. You can develop better. Don't just allow, uh, don't just suck in and just, just relax and, and make your life, park your life at this, this, this is just where we are as a family. We all do this. Don't park on that level of, of comfort, you know, because you'll never arrive that God can trust you with something better. Matter of fact, I don't want to even look, and I say, I love my family, but I don't want to park at our uh, handicap, so to speak. I, wanna, I don't want to park at our, uh, our weaknesses and then it's, it just accept it like we, we defeated here. I don't want to park at, well, nobody in my family have ever been to college. You know what I mean? I don't want to park at stupid stuff because I'm just afraid and the family is comfortable with being fearful here. We never take chances. You know what I mean? It, it, is, it is a beautiful thing when somebody step beyond the family and go to college and get a breakthrough and be the first one in their family to get a, a degree or something like that beyond high school. You know what I mean? Uh, I think I was one of few of my high, uh, even when I graduated from high school, was one at the time a few of my family members that ever just accomplished uh, grade 12. You know what I mean? And, and it's not a put down, but it's, that's real talk. You know, then, then more start happening in my family with people who were accomplishing great things. You know, 12th grade, you know, the younger generation, Going to school, I know times were different for maybe our foremothers and forefathers who had to probably be in the field, could not complete their education because of the times of slavery and stuff like that. So we're not putting them down, but they are always encouraged. You know, the, it's like the next, the, the, the younger generation to me should do better than the older generation. And the older generation imparting the wisdom or what they've learned from their foremothers and forefathers to pass down to the second and third and fourth generation. So I believe every generation should do better, not, not worse. Come on now. I believe that your children should do better than you. I believe your children should succeed you. Or not succeed, they should do way beyond what you're doing. Come on now. That's, I believe that. Don't get jealous, moms and dads. If your child is excelling, you, you should be excited about that. You should complete them, not compete against them. Because some of you compete against your children. They go to school, you feel like you need to go to school. They go to college, and then you're making them feel bad because you got pregnant with them, and you couldn't drop out of school. And now they, you know, growing up to be young women or men, now they going off to school, you jealous that they going to college. And you making them feel bad because you got pregnant. Or whatever the case, sir, you had a baby. I mean, you can't make them children feel bad because, you know, they dropped, you know, you dropped out of school to give them a good life. You're supposed to take care of your children. Praise God. I'm just saying, you, that's your duty to take care of them. Nobody told you to lay down, neither. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Praise God. It happened, and thank God you were a responsible mom or dad when you handled your business. 
but you don't want to compete with them. Like, I'm going to go to college too. I always want to do this. And none of my dreams, you know, we get to talking crazy. You need to know my first obligation, first of all, is to love the Lord my God. My second obligation is to take care of my children and give them a good life. Then after they finish school, then I can take my little self to school or go to college and do something I want to do to complete the things that I need to complete. But we're not going to compete against our children. That is crazy. Come on now. That's crazy. We need to give them a better life. I'm not saying spoil them, but you need to make sure they're exposed and that they have a better chance of winning in the situation that maybe you did at the age that you were at. Come on now. Hit the share button. Somebody understand exactly what the bishop is talking about. We need to make sure that they're winning. So let's look at a couple of scripture references. Don't want to bore you, but I want to give you this because it's powerful. Let's go to one of my favorite scriptures. This is another one of my favorite in the Bible. It's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Let's go over there because it's powerful. We're talking about the spirit of fear. And it's good because some of you, again, have the spirit of fear on you. And uh, you can't have faith and fear operating in the same body. You've got to either choose one or the other. Amen. And we ain't nothing, it's nothing. Uh, I don't want you ever being afraid when you serve a big old God. Amen. You have to ever be afraid of the devil who comes as the boogeyman, who comes to scare you, who comes to intimidate you, who comes to tell you that it's not going to work. Man, this whole campus, everything we've done, amen, by the grace of God, I had to do it with a lot of courage, you know. God had to encourage me with courage. Courage, courage means that fear was present, but I moved beyond my fear and kept it going, amen. It's like trusting while trembling. I was afraid, but I didn't let fear grip me, praise God. I, I was afraid because the fear came, and I felt the presence of fear, but I didn't let it stop me. Y'all been hear what I'm saying. I just kept moving because I knew God was with me. You know what I mean? Why, why are you going to school, God, trying to accomplish another degree? You're scared. You don't know if you're going to work out or whatever. You know, you're trying to do big things in life. You don't know if it's going to work out, but you're moving, and you're still trembling, and you're still trusting at the same time. That's what's called courage, praise God. That means that you're going against the spirit of fear. You're going against the, not letting the spirit of fear captivate you to stop because you understand if I stop, the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not staying in this valley. I'm not going to be parked in this valley. I'm not going to have no pity party in this valley because there's a shadow and the fullness of God and light because light is in the shadow, light is in the tunnel. That means that God is with you because you can't have a shadow without light. That means dark, dark and dark and light hit at the same time to create a shadow. That means that yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. It's a shadow of death. Come on now. That means that God is right there while death is trying to have a conversation in my left ear. God is trying to have a good conversation in my right ear saying, keep going, child. There's light. And when they say at the end of the tunnel, you're going to make it. You're not going to fail. You will succeed. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. You're on the second wind. Keep your eyes on me. Keep focus on me. You will supernaturally walk on water. I got you, child. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to turn you loose. You can do this. You got this. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep pursuing. Keep believing. Keep moving. You got this in Jesus' name. Come on, child. Go hit the share button. That's what I'm talking about. We need to keep our eyes on God at those moments of pivotal moments in our lives where we want to give in, we want to sink in, we want to just quit right there. God said, no, no, no. You don't have the spirit of quitting on you. You are a finisher. You got this, child of God. I am your daddy. I am El Shaddai. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Rophi. I got you. I'm Jehovah Kadesh. I am the God of the universe. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of the stellars. Come on. I'm the God of the of the of the of the, of the, the coast, the cosmos. I'm the God, come on, of Jupiter, the sun, the planet. I own it all. Uh, 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 ten, uh, let's say a cattle on a thousand here. I got you, son and daughter. I got you. I own everything on this planet. I created it all. In the beginning, God. I am from the beginning, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. I got you. Don't you punk out. Don't you let the devil bring fear. Don't you let the devil cause you to back up. Don't you let the devil put in your ear that you're not going to accomplish this. You got this by the grace of God. I am with you. Lo, I'm with you even to the end of the world. Fear not, child of God. I'm with you. Come on now. Glory be to God. Let's look at some of these scriptures. That's the scripture I want to get. Fear not. Come on, the Bible says there's a lot of scriptures on fear because the devil understands this piece right here. If you allow fear to captivate your heart, child of God, you won't do anything. You are just going to punk out and remain in the same old whatever. They say, que sera, sera, whatever it will be, whatever it will be. We're not living our lives like that. We're living our lives on vision. We're living our eyes, come on, set fast, 
steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God, knowing that I have something to do and I don't have all day to accomplish this thing. I got something in my spirit that has to get in the earth realm. It is a time frame that it has to come forth. It has to be birthed through me. It's like anything, moms, you can appreciate this. Yes, you may be pregnant with vision. Yes, everybody around you may be encouraging you, but you know at the end of the day, mother, you're going to be on the only one at that table pushing that baby out. The only one that table at the end of the day pushing that vision forward. And some of us are right there. We have our midwives. We got people around us. But you, the one, got to push this vision through. You, the one, got to push this thing to the earth. Come on, you got this thing. God is with us. He's not left us. I don't care what it feels like. You know it's pain. You know some of you never, some of you that had children experienced some pain. Some didn't. But hey, for the ones that did, you understand it's worth the journey, baby. Come on, that pain has nothing uh, compared to the pleasure of that baby face. Come on now, that the thing that you're about to birth is about to do something magnificent. The thing that you're about to birth is about to do something, uh, come on, uh, extraordinary. The thing you're about to birth is about to do some amazing things in the earth rim in the name of Jesus. You got this. God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Glory to God. Hit the share button, everybody. Come on, Bishop going off. I'm telling you, I'm having a little fun time going off right here. So let's look at the scripture reference really quick in my time remaining. Praise God. Bible come on apart. We're going to let it come on apart, right? Praise God. All right, let's look at this. Second Timothy, I hope you're enjoying your, the word. Come on, hit the share button, everybody. Really quick, hit the share button because, man, we, just, we ain't going to let the devil punk us out from developing us. We got to get developed in Jesus' name. Come on, we got to be the best us that we can be. Second Timothy 1, 7, not belaboring the time. Let's go over here and read this because this is good, y'all. This is good. This is some good stuff here. This is a powerful scripture, man. I want you to pay close attention to this scripture right here. Okay, right there, 2 Timothy 2, 1, and verse number 7 says this. It says, uh, where am I at? Well, okay, 2 Timothy. I want 2 Timothy. All right. All right. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Yeah, 2 Timothy. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Right here. All right, 2 Timothy. All right, we're there. All right, 1 and 7. It says this. For God hath not, hath not given us the spirit of fear. You hear that? Hath not given us the spirit of fear. Look, listen to this, child of God. The spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right? Now, I want you to look up real quick, everybody. This is powerful. This is powerful because you got to understand this. This is how powerful fear is. Not applauding fear, but fear is not normal. He said here, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So what is it telling us? Fear is a spirit. Mm. It's not natural. He said, we've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power. Ooh, but of power. So now what, watch this child of God. So he's telling me the power that he's bestowing upon you is a spirit too. Glory to God. I'm not putting a spirit of power on you, but the spirit, I'm not putting a spirit of fear on you, but I'm giving you the spirit of power. And guess what he said? And of love. So he said also, love is a spirit too that I'm going to put on you. Yeah, it's going to motivate you to do the right thing. Glory to God. And then, it's powerful, y'all. Then he said, I'm going to put the spirit of a sound mind on you. Ooh, glory be to God. You better understand, when you wake up every morning and you know your name and you can brush your teeth and be mobile and know your surroundings the day of the week and you can comprehend, you better know it's a blessing. Because some people don't have sound minds. And not having a sound mind means that there's not a spirit of a sound mind on them. Come on now. So it's a blessing that the child, the children of God, because we do not operate in the spirit of fear, but of love, spirit of love, but of the spirit of power, spirit of love, and spirit of a sound mind. So God says, instead of you having a spirit of fear on you, the only thing you need is these three things. A spirit, come on, of, of love. Spirit of a, uh, let's go back over here. I don't want to mess it up. I'm messing it up. But let's go back to the scripture and let the scripture talk. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. So he said, I'm, I'm going to put the spirit of power on you. Then I'm going to put the spirit of love on you. And then I'm going to put the spirit of a sound mind on you. So the spirit of power, spirit of love, come on, and the spirit of a sound mind. Come on now. Spirit of power, spirit of love, and a sound mind on you. Fear cannot come and accomplish and do what it wants to do when I put a spirit of power on you. Come on now. That's powerful. That's powerful. 
He said, I'm putting the spirit of power on you to combat the fear. Oh, I'm putting the spirit of love on you to combat the spirit, the spirit of fear. And I'm putting the spirit of a sound mind. The sound mind means this. When the devil saying, you're going to punk out. You ain't going to make it. Sound mind says, devil, I rebuke you. I cast those thoughts down. I cast down every imagination that it lifts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Satan, I bind you. You're bound. Hand, feet, and mouth. I will succeed. You don't have no money to bank out. I don't need money. Praise God. I just need him. He told me what to do. You know, I told you the story last week about the facility. I, you know, I'm steady back and forth with God. He didn't say, son, you need money for it. He said, go talk to the owner. Praise God. We need to follow the instructions. My mind was trying to wrap itself around the natural part that the, the church don't have a million dollars, and God mentioned nothing about, nothing about the million dollars. The man did. God didn't say, I need the million. He said, go talk to the man. Find the owner. Follow the instructions. My mind had to be in a sound mind, a sound mind. Come on, it's a godly mind. It's a, it's a, it's a mind that's filled with the spirit of power, a mind that's filled with the spirit of love. Come on, y'all. Sound mind. Not letting your mind run your life. Not letting your thoughts be all over the place like Aunt Ben. Not being fearful to do anything. Some of you are too fearful to step out when God tells you to do something. Some of you analyze too much. Some of you sit back and think too hard, and you, and you talk yourself out of the will of God. You let the devil just talk and punk you right out of the blessings of God. Some of you are supposed to be way beyond where you are, but you let the devil talk you right on out of the will of God because you're too afraid. You, you analyze too long. You take too long to make a decision. Ooh, man, I didn't think nobody TV land like that, boy. Come on, hit the share button. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm, I, I got to get you out of that. I got to get you out of that lazy boy seat. I got to get you out of that lazy girl. What's that? Uh, lazy, lazy girl seat. Praise God. No, no, we take too long to make a decision. And, and, you, and what's happening, you allow the spirit of fear to punk you. And you're doing like, well, I have enough money. And you just talk yourself right out. Well, you know, the timing, it's COVID. Well, you know, I, I just rather wait because I don't know what's going to happen. Ooh, they're talking about the second strand coming out. I just rather wait because, you know, you, know, you don't want to step out here and be, ooh, with all these products. And uh, oh, this, this, this hush. This hush. You're talking, you, you're making me mad. Praise God. You're talking yourself right out of stuff, and you're missing all that God has ordained for your life. Child of God, don't let the devil do that. I'm telling you. HHIM campus would not be here to this day, would not be. I'm not patting myself on the back. Man, it took courageous moves by God. You hear me, child of God? Everything from, from raising, from, from, from going to find the man, then, you know, trusting God for the money to, to, to bring the man the $100,000 that we needed at the table for the closing, and then to finance the remaining, come on, for 13 years or 15 years, praise God. I mean, bringing that man seven grand, $7,191 every month, that was no joke. That's not light water and all that good stuff. But look at child of God, we couldn't punk out. We said, God, for God we live, for God we die. God got us out here. And by some way, somehow, it's going to get renovated. Some way, somehow, it's going to get all done. Come on, he is our light. He shines bright on our path. He's not going to shame us. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. And we just kept saying that word. Lord, you got us. You got us. You just got us. You got us. And I don't know. I'm just going to follow what you tell us to do. Child of God, if you follow what God tells you to do, you're going to be all right. If you follow what the Lord tells you to do, you're going to succeed. If you don't let fear come in one ear, come on now, and get into your heart. See, you heard, you heard a saying like this, out of sight, out of mind. But watch this, out of ear, out of heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody just posted, that's good, Bishop. Out of ear, out of heart. Mm-hmm. See, I got to understand, the devil knows this, if I keep it out of your ear, it'll get out of your heart. That's why you have to be careful who whispered into your ear. That's how you have to be careful what you allow to speak into your life. Amen. Some of you watch too many movies and it, fear, it brings fear. Some, 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 some things that you got to be careful of what you set before your eyes. Psalms 101, what you set before your eyes. You got to be mindful of what you look at in your private time because it's going to either birth fear or faith. It's going to bring fear or it's going to bring fear or faith. It's going to cause faith to come alive. But we know the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hear by the word of God. So you got to definitely make a decision every day, child of God, to make sure that you're into this word, getting your dose of the word of God. So now let me let me give you a couple more scriptures mm -hmm, uh, that we'll, we'll, let's deal with this fear factor real quick. And uh, let's go over here to, uh, <laughs> it's good, Psalms 56. Psalms 56 and 3, let's look at this. Scripture has so much to say about fear. And I don't want you not to develop yourself because you're fearful. You know what I mean? You have to make stands and you have to, 
you have to, you have to make bold declarations in life. And man, I'm telling you, I look back at me and my wife again, Dr. T. God bless her. And uh, man, I mean, she, that girl, uh, because of her life, her stance in God, my life is the better. You hear me? I mean, she was bold. She was very bold about things and her faith and uh, her, you know, she pursued when she sensed God wanted her to have something. She wasn't, she wasn't shy about it, but she was much, much bolder than I was. And I've learned, amen, to be bolder over the years just watching her grow and watching her faith in God. I did. That girl was not ashamed of the gospel, not that I was, but I'm saying she was just bold about stuff. But she believed it, she locked into it. You got it? And sometimes with me, I'm, I'm the analyzer. I'm trying to think about how we're going to pay for it, you know? And I don't know if I'm just, uh, that's something that a man normally worries about with his wife. When you're going pursuing houses and cars and stuff, the man probably worried more about how he's going to get paid for. But baby, I don't know. We comfortable. Baby, I ain't comfortable with this house. This house is good for what it was. And the wife's yelling, she want bigger. And the husband looking, he looking crazy like, well, baby, you ain't comfortable with this house? Baby, I want a nicer house. I want to upgrade. I want to, I want to, I want the, the current stuff, you know, all the, the, the new stuff on the new house. You know, ain't nothing wrong with upgrade. And we men cannot be afraid. Come on, the move in our wives are ready sometimes to move even to the upgrade. I thank God for Pastor T because, you know, uh, she would get stuff going and I had to finish it, praise God. She did. She would get it going. She said, all right, Bishop, turn around. Oh, Lord. I know what it meant, work for me, praise God. But that was our grace. Her grace was to get it started. My grace was to finish it. She, and God knew, and God knows to this day, he's not going to put something in my hands. He knows it's not going to get done. He knows if he puts something in my hands, my son's going to finish it, praise God, because I always want to please God. And I always want to make the kingdom look good. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I always want the kingdom to look good on my watch. I'm serious. My daddy, I want Heavenly Father to look. Not that I, he needs something in my life to make him look good. But if he puts something in our hands here in church, y'all know what I'm saying? Like with this campus. Come on now. We're going to make sure that, that, we're gonna make sure that it gets done. You got it? Because that's what we do. We represent the KOG as kingdom of God. We represent him. All right. Now, let's look at the scripture. Our time is moving, y'all, so much faster as we're getting closer to the end. So well, let's look at Psalms 56, praise God, and let's look at verse number 3 because this is some good stuff. I want to give you this, drop this reference on you because I believe it will help you, all right? Psalms 56 and 3, it says, because of the voice of, of the enemy, uh, 50, let me make sure I'm at the right one, 57, 55, sorry about that, 56, 3, it says, uh, uh, let, let's just, uh, let's go to verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. How I many feel like you might be trying to be swallowed up in a situation? Oh, man, isn't that crazy? Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, fighting daily, oppresseth me. My enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high. Verse 3 says, What time... I am afraid I will trust in thee. Oh, my God, that's good. In God, I will praise his word. In God, have I put my trust. And I will not be, a, I will not be, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Ooh, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff, child of God. I'm not going to be afraid of what man can do unto me. Boy, I'm talking about when you feel like you're being devoured on your job and harassed in the community and, Oh, man, come on, y'all. Y'all, some of y'all know exactly what I'm saying. Boy, this scripture here comes alive. You understand? When you got God on your side and when God is telling you stuff like Psalms 56 and 4, in God will I put, praise his word, in God have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my word. All their thoughts are against me for evil. And they gather themselves. They keep going on like that. But I'm telling you what, the scripture comes back and talks about this person, right, saying, I'm not going to allow fear to do this. I'm not going to allow fear to grip my mind, and it caused me to be afraid. Praise God. When you got, child, God, listen to this. When you have God on your side, who else do you need? Glory be to God. When you have God on your side, who else do you really need? Glory to God. Hey, man, come on now. If you got God, you got everything, baby. If you got man, baby, I don't care if you got a million something men, 3,000 men, you ain't got nothing. If you got all men, women on your side and no God, baby, you got nothing in this life. The Bible said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and what? To lose his soul. If I got God, baby, I got everything. 
I got the angels. I got God, the Godhead, the heavenly host. I got it all. And you understand? And so, so we have to be very cognizant, cognizant of that, the fact that God got our back. He's not going to let us go down. He's he going he gonna to protect us. And then he has to, you know, uh, cause our hearts to be calm. Come on now, because sometimes your heart gets anxious about things. Come on, peace I leave with you. That's what he said there in John 14, 27. Write that down. Peace is what I leave with you, is my own peace that I give you. I do not give as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Come on, that's, that's John 14, 27. God tells us he gives us peace. Come on now. Amen. There, there's no fear in love. Perfect, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has do, uh, do, to do with punishment. The one who fears is, is not made perfect in love. 1 John 4 and verse number 18. Come on now. I'm going to give you one last one. We'll conclude with this one here. And, uh, but this is good here. It says, uh, 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 let's go right here. Verse number, uh, let's give you another good one here, right here at Psalms. Uh, not Psalms. I want to give you Isaiah 41 and 10, one of my favorites. I'm going to read this one out loud for you. It says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Oh, I love it. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. God. See, you're talking about God there, not man. I, God, will help you. I, God, will strengthen you. I, God, will uphold you with my right hand. Now, who's going to come and bother you when, you when you're in God's hands? Who, the devil? You joking me? Are you really teasing me? Who going who to come up against you and bother you while you're in the hands of Almighty God? He said, don't be fearful, child. I'm with you. See, that, that's, that to me is loaded. I, watch this, y'all. So do not fear. I'm with you. You got to understand who which duck. Ma'am, sir, you got to understand who you ride with. You talking about this is my ride to live, my ride to die? Look, you got to know who ride with you. Who in the vehicle with you? Come on now. You saying God's telling us through this scripture, Isaiah 41, 10, he's telling us, so do not fear, for I'm with you. Who else do we need to be afraid of when God is with us? See, when God is with you, you understand you got the whole world, you got everything that you ever need, everything that you ever going to need. You got it? Everything that you need, everything that you ever going to need, baby. That's why we can't forsake him. That's why we can't act like we ain't got time for him. Come on now. Some of you feel like, oh, I feel like so far away from God. But you feel so far away because you won't spend time with him. You won't spend time to pray. You won't spend time in the word. You won't spend time to fellowship with him. You need to feel far away from him. Come on now. He don't want you to feel that way. And then, then when you feel like with life coming, you feel like you got nobody to help you. No, the scripture still is relevant. He says, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of time. I'll be right there with you. But you don't need to be feeling like I'm going to be defeated. I'm going to be beat down. You know, you got God by your side in the car with you. Who the devil is he to roll up on you and to think he's going to conquer you? Who the devil uh, think he is just to uh, put any thoughts in your mind when God is with you? He ain't going to roll up on you. Matter of fact, he don't want no part of God. He don't want to deal with you. He don't want to deal with no part when you and God, when you in God's presence. See, see, when God says he's with you, that means that he's, uh, he's, he's in your atmosphere. He's on you. Come on. God, uh, 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 the Bible talks about Jesus, the hope of glory, right? The same power, read that some weeks ago. Or quoted it, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of your mortal bodies. The devil ain't trying to roll up on you when you got Jesus on the inside of you. Come on now. I'm just saying, he don't want to bother you because he don't want to deal with Jesus. He don't want to be reminded, come on, watch this, not so much about what happened, but he don't want to be reminded about where he's going. He, he understand, he, he goes to the lake of fire. He has no hope for redemption. That's why he hate mankind, because God gave us we can go mess up 20 times, and if we got still life in our body, we can repent and turn our lives around. Satan don't have that chance. He blew it. Praise God. He going to hell. He cannot be redeemed. He cannot be, come on, brought back with salvation. He hates God's creation that we have a chance to get ourselves together. Come on, develop ourselves so we don't miss a mark with God or miss a point of salvation or miss that moment to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives as Lord and Savior. The devil knows that. And he hates that, that we got a chance, and he don't have a chance. But you can't let that rascal fool you. You can't let him bring fear. You can't let him bring his garbage to you. You can't let him bring his people around you. Come on, he got people on assignment, just like God got people on assignment, child of God. Yeah, yeah, the devil got people on assignment to what? To destroy you. His MO is to kill, steal, 
and destroy. You know it. That's his MO. But God's MO, he's come that we may have that life and what? And have it more abundantly. So God has come that we may have life and that we may develop and be little Christ's on the earth. Little G, God. That's what the Bible says. We're, we're small G's on the earth. You're not a God, but you are like Christ himself. Christ made you. He's in you. Come on. We're, we're representatives of Christ. We're ambassadors of God. Come on now. We're supposed to look like, smell like Jesus Christ himself. The devil don't like that because we're, we're becoming to look like him. When you speak into the atmosphere, the atmosphere thinks Christ is talking because you're saying what he would say. Praise God. Y'all been hearing what I'm saying. Amen. The Bible's about you calling those things that be not as though they were. That's why the atmosphere got to listen to you just like it listened to Christ. The wind's got to obey you just like it listened to Christ. The water's got to obey you just like it listened to Christ. Why? Because we're becoming more developed, and that's the whole essence of us being developed so that we can look and smell like him. Come on now. So we say, peace be still. Peace is on the earth. When we say, cancer, you got to get out of that body. Come on now. Woman, be whole. Come on. It has to obey us. We have to learn even through the word, that we can operate in this level of power. And the devil knows he don't want us to. He wants to always stay fearful. He don't want us to accomplish nothing great. He don't want you to come into your own because you understand if we ever get the revelation and keep developing us, get flesh off of our lives, get ourselves out of a fleshly mode and into a spiritual mode, come on now, get ourselves more looking like him, come on, more than looking like the world, he going to be in trouble. He know he can't do nothing with you. So he always keep you fearful. Always keep you not wanting to, to develop yourself. Always keeping you, come on, dragging yourself along year in and year out on the same old way you looked last year, you looked like that and worse. Come on, you ain't trying to do nothing to improve your life, nothing to improve your health, nothing to improve your credit score, nothing to improve your finances, nothing to start your business. Same old excuse you had in, come on, 2015, you don't brought it over to 2021. The devil is a liar. It's time out for you be shucking and jiving it's time for you to get what God called you to be. It's time for you to do what God has called you to do. It's time for you to get on with the assignment. You don't have all day to fulfill the assignment, child of God. We got stuff to do for the kingdom of God, and we're not going to wait all day. God is urging us. He's, he's wooing us. Time is of the essence. The time is now. There's an urgency of time to accomplish what he called us to do, and we're going to do it bigly. We're going to do it, come on, bravely. We're going to do it with the anointing on our lives. We're going to do it with his grace on our lives. We're going to do it. Come on. Standing tall in the kingdom and not asking the devil for permission. We're going to do it and we're going to crack uh, Satan's skull. Come on. Crack his skull in the name of Jesus. Dance all over his, come on, parade. Dance all over his, his mess. Come on, glory be to God. And go and do what God has called us to do. We're not looking back like Lot's wife. We're not going to panic. Come on, we're not going to be afraid, and we're not going to punk out. We ain't even scared. We ain't even scared. Come on now. We ain't scared. That's what Petty D said. Thank you, Petty. But look, we ain't scared, and we thank God because he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. We got to go forth and do all that God has called us to do, child of God. I'm excited because I know you can do this. I know you got this. You can do this. Come on now. You have the wherewithal to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Don't you punk out. Some of you need to go back and pick up those other ideas that he told you to do. You've been thinking too long on it, and you're missing a whole other. You've been praying about an uh, increase, and that's your increase because God has already showed you what to do. Now you've got to strategically put the thing together, and, and, and God will send even the people to help you. But you too punked out to my what you got, and you're afraid. Because the devil has just brought a lot of fear, and you've not had a chance just to sort it out of your mind how it will be a blessing to you. No, you may not be able to make the whole part of the thing. You might only make 50%, but at least you're making 50% more. I'm just saying, and you ain't, ain't got to run it. Praise God. I'm just saying, child of God, don't let the devil punk you. Lord, we need more over here, more. God said, well, I done gave you the idea five times. You won't move. What do you want, what else, what do you want me to do? Come out here and do it for you? I'm just saying. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you know I'm, I'm, I'm sparking your spirit as we're talking. But look, y'all, guess what? I'm out of time. Glory to God. I can't even believe it. I am slapped out of time. Oh, my goodness. I hope you had a good time today. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this word. Thank you so much for tuning in. I enjoy it. I just get it. You know, we get to flowing, y'all. We get to going and we get to going. And, and time just be up, man. I'm, I, I, I do apologize. 
But look, I'll be here next week again. I promise you that. And thank you again for tuning in. Look, where you are, don't want to keep belaboring the time, but where you are right there, wherever you may be doing what you're doing, if you would just bow your heads. If you're driving your car, please keep your eyes on the road. But if you're anywhere else, if you could just pause for a minute and give me your, your quick couple of minutes here. Because I want to make sure that, you know, we never want to leave our broadcast without giving people an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So right there where you are, if you would bow your heads and repeat this prayer, we say, Dear God in heaven, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father God, for being a loving God. Father, you said in your word that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I repent of all my sins. Now I accept his plan of salvation into my heart. I am, according to, the Rome, according to the word, Romans 10 and 9, I am saved. I receive him right now. And I turn away from all the sins of my past life. And I thank you, Father, for welcoming me to the best family in the world, the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, man, I'm excited about that. Child of God, while you're home, if you would just stop and take a praise break right there, and thank God for the people of God, whoever they were, whoever just confessed, come on with their mouths this prayer. I'm excited because that's what it's all about. Jesus came to die for sinners, man. That's what it's all about, y'all. Come on now. The Bible says he came to seek and save the lost. So if we're causing souls to come into the kingdom, man, we're doing something huge right there. Come on now. I mean, God ain't too impressed with all our preaching and teaching and homiletics and all that and exegesis. I'm talking about people coming to the souls, coming to the kingdom. That's exciting to me. Praise God. He'll use us so that people can, can tune in and then tap to where this point here. And when people give their lives to the Lord, we're excited, y'all. Look, thank you again for tuning in. If you need any information, additional information about your newfound relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, write us. Hit us with an email. We're more than happy to reach out to you to see you some information, literature package. Hey, I'm excited for you. Praise God. And Him Church, let's give those a hand clap at home for those that accepted the Lord as their Savior. Thank you so very much. We we'll appreciate that. Amen. I also want to let you know we have uh, many, many ways you can continue to give to the kingdom of God. Thank you all for giving and so on, supporting of the ministry. We are the better. Come on, we are paid in full by the grace of God. You all made that happen. Y'all remember the date? Come on, May. Come on, May of uh, May 17, 2000. Uh, May 18, 2017. You made that a possibility for your church to be paid in full. So again, thank you all for your contribution, your love, your gifts of love that you sent in through. Uh, the, we don't have the church cash up through PayPal, through through uh, through uh, uh, Lord PayPal and the mobile phone app and all the ways that we give. Uh, uh, I think there's several ways we give there. So uh, just look at the bottom of your screen. It should have all the giving means and ways that that we can give and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Uh, again, thank you all those that are soaring into my life. As I shared with you some weeks ago, my cash app has changed. It's Bishop uh, Taylor Made. That's B A. Uh, Bishop, uh, dollar sign, Bishop, B-I-S-H-O-P, Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, made, M-A-D-E, that's me. So I had to change it because something got hiccuped with my old uh, cash app, but hey, and also uh, using that, working well, and also Zelle, those that are not familiar with Zelle, Zelle is a great way to give to uh, the man of God as well. So uh, you can look on your bank, some of your bank has Zelle, it's Zelle goes straight to the account. So you see my Gmail, which is Bishop Jerome Taylor, at gmail.com and my phone number. Some of you need my phone number, just reach out to me. You have it already. Uh, if you need it, just hit me up and I'll give it to you, all right? Or if you, if you some of you already have it. So if you need it, just, just hit me up somewhere else or email me. We'll make sure you get the phone number. All right, so look, we love you. We appreciate you so very much. I know that, uh, again, these broadcasts go really fast. So get this word, share it, keep sharing it so we can get it to the ears of people so that faith can grow and their doubts can starve. Hey, remember these words? Oh, I, oh, I got something last I need to do. Shameless plug, I was just ready to close the broadcast uh, without giving you this exciting news. Hey, look, shameless plug, man. Guess what? This came in the mail, volume one and volume two of your boys' CDs. Praise God. I have USBs coming for my USB folk that don't have CDs in your player or CD players in your car. But look, volume one and volume two is in the hands of the bishop. And all in the hands of the bishop, they're on my website, y'all, jalexandertaylor.com. All right, uh, jalexandertaylor.com, 
I want to make sure I give you the right website. I think it should be on there. Uh, yeah, I don't, it's not on that picture, but it's jalexandertaylor.com. Uh, there it is, right on the back of the thing here, huh? www.jalexandertaylor.com if you want to order your CD today, volume one, volume two, $10 a piece, two for 20 is worth it, I tell you. And I have a last cut that I put on this, uh, these two albums. It's uh, Wind Beneath My Hair. And I did these two cuts last, uh, me and my daughter, we did these two cuts last. And they're on the app, but they're not on the uh, YouTube. Some of you listen to it for free on YouTube and also Spotify. Please listen to it. I get, you know, they, uh, I want my, my listening audience to go up, so please share it. I mean, let people know that Bishop got some great music, so go on Spotify and listen to it or YouTube for me. I appreciate that. If you don't want to buy it, that's cool. But if you want your own copy, please order it, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not tripping. It's some good music. I, I'm so serious. You know, it's pretty cool, right, that I got my phone set to wake up at a certain time. And it's pretty cool to have your own phone set up, uh, tapped into Spotify to, to listen to your own music while you're waking up. It is the craziest feeling. Praise God. This is waking up with your, with your ringtones to your own music. Oh, I love it. So look, look I'm not tripping. It's just a beautiful thing. And I'm grateful to the Lord. But you need to get this because the picture looked good. First of all, the dude on there looked, you know, like he, you know, he looked pretty decent dude right there, right? You need to get it for the picture only. Praise God. But again, two, two for 20, one for 10 a piece, volume one, volume two. And it's good. I mean, really some good riding music. You need some clean, good music. This is the joint, I'm telling you. And then some of you haven't heard the last song. So I got 12, uh, I have 23 songs total on the whole album. And uh, I'm very godly excited about this. these two. Uh, this is a, a very godly, proud work that I'm about, uh, you know, excited about that we've done. So, hey, look, get the CDs. Don't believe it. I'm not believing it for it. Get the CDs, jalexandertaylor.com. If you go on there, um, you can order it at $20. I'll make sure that that, that is... Uh, uh, a feature there so you get these two CDs, okay? I love you, and we'll see you next week. Remember these words from Acts chapter 17 and verse number 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. And by the way, you know heart to heart is all about him. <laughs>